お前はもう死んでいる何お前はたくみでギゼブバジェット What バジェット King Oja the last few weeks seems to be working for pennies and this week is no exception From character revelations that didn't really seem alluded to, to Furious Godfest, worthy of something that should have happened months ago. So let's go ahead and dive in on this week's King Oger. Grody is mad that the others died before him, so Himeno is more than willing to appease her with her brand new power a CG scythe that robs anything it slices of life. And with that, Grody. Is finally. Nah, son, he ain't dead, but she did knock some stones right out of him. Picking up those go 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 gorgeous stones, he knows Doug Dead's got the answers. Turns out, I guess, that Doug Dead is also Grody's dad because he was made. But just the thought of things re triggered some deep seated memories to his origins. Great, so we getting a flashback? Oh, he's just. Gonna take a nap. Wow. How. How nice of you, Toei Budget. Back at Himeno's, they deduce that Grody is similar to Gira, except he's ingested a whole lot of souls, which we know from Gira's flashback some episodes ago would have turned him into a blank slate and the perfect killing machine. He also is fully functionally immortal, since even Himeno's attack couldn't do shit. But. Raculous lures in Jeremy with the DTF face just to blast him with some more lore. But first, they gotta dig some holes. Cause bugs gotta learn how to mourn their dead. Anyway, Raculous thinks Jeremy also has a power up from his dad. Even though he was exiled, what if he was let go for? His arachna fever. And Jeremy holds the key to the power, which seems to have been pulled completely from nowhere. Because this man has an immortality jewel right in his chest. Also, you can tell he's just rocking a green shirt in this shot. But yes, Jeremy's jewel may be the key to beating Grody. There's also some shit that Raculous says that really makes Jeremy contemplate whether or not he wants to live forever or not. Himeno wants to test her powers on Gira, since he's immortal, while also admitting that Gira's power is what every doctor dreams of, the cure-all for death and all illness. Yes, nothing Big Pharma would like more than to be completely out of business. But Gira's not an immortal in terms of being unable to die, he's more like Wolverine and can just heal really, really, really quickly. But who is immortally long-lived? Not Orga, but Jeremy! Though now, Grody is back awake and remembers that he was made as a killing machine. And that's his purpose and his one and only duty in his life. Now back to that family jewel, as this episode continues to retcon what's been visually shown to us as Jeremy's childhood by implying that he can't age so long as he has that jewel. But they could use it to make everyone immortal maybe even bring back folks from the dead sounds like dark plague is the wise you have a hill. wow two prequel trilogy references back to back i think i'm getting a sign here so we now join the somber trails to defeating death itself while garajim finally makes his return asking jeremy what's it like to live so long well easy old people leave new people come in it's a circle but now that he's met the kings he wants to grow old with them also how cold is that cave because i don't know about you all but all i could do was look at that hot breath air now it's time for the final face-off with classic dead bug Narak galore and the heaping dose of grody with the beam scythe but jeremy webs him up so himino can give him that truth bomb it turns out that Grody is dead. So her powers were completely ineffective if he was actually dead. 
So it turns out that his own powers worked on him. So he's just reanimated. And you know, maybe being immortal is a bad thing because eventually folks will just get bored and want to just end things. But luckily, they've got a cure and it's that jewel that was just introduced. Himeno's taking it from Jeremy and shooting it right into Grody, giving him newfound life. This is the dumbest plan ever. It's so dumb. Why would you do... Why would you do this? Why would you give someone that you know is, like, maniacally evil immortality? I know that you've got a chance to defeat immortals because you've got that ability now. But for the slight sliver, you didn't think that this was a bad idea? <sighs> With that, he now has all the energy to re-unleash the full-on fury of the Fury's gods. Godfest 2024. Rating time. So, this episode, like the last one, really felt dragged out. Once again, you can kind of feel the budget with having Grody go through his own revelations, not through the power of flashbacks, but through the power of napping. But this episode really just felt like a disappointment with the abilities pulled here. The saving grace for this episode was that it segues into a bigger potential turning point that really should have happened ages ago. But outside of that, this episode honestly got worse the more that I watched it, finding more flaws with it. Thus, I've got to welcome the first ever Dynaman Dynaman! Every time I watch these episodes, I get the big old feeling like Wrap it up. Wrap that shit up, dude. That. Exactly that. This added power-up arc of the show has been very eye-rolling from the moment it was first introduced. It already served as a bit of a retcon to the original historical plot point of this show. But now Jeremy's entire timeline doesn't make sense to me. This jewel embedded in Jeremy stops him from aging. But when exactly did he get it? Because if he got it when he was a kid, it's implied that he would have just been a kid forever. And his dad was already gone when he was a kid anyway. So was it given to him by his mother? No, it couldn't have, because she also died when he was a kid as well. So that means it's going with the possible explainer that it only works when you've reached maturity? Once again, so much of this just sounds like reaching in order to make sense of things. And before people start citing blogs and whatnot, at the end of the day, most people are just going to judge the show based off of the show itself and what it presents, and not what they try explaining away in a blog when you have episodes right after kind of refuting what was posted before anyway. Quoting the blog that the Doug Dead that we currently see is not the Doug Dead that was killed, but essentially one plug from an alternate timeline. But that makes no sense given how Doug Dead reacted when he got revived, and also that we see the inside of Minangon showing all the individual baby Doug Deads in there. I will say that there was a tease of Himeno venturing into the dark side, something that I wish would have ended up being its own thing. Seriously, the prospect of Himeno being jealous of Gira's healing abilities and seeking to extract it for what she'd seemed to be the greater good? Fantastic potential for a dark Himeno arc. And honestly, that should have been this entire arc, as opposed to just getting these power-ups. But they squashed that feeling within the very same episode. But really, I would have rather taken a Dark Himeno arc versus yet another power-up arc. Think of it like Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon, the Toku show. Which, if you haven't seen, is great. But they have a Dark Mercury arc? Ugh, chef's kiss. It's a good arc. If we would have gotten something like that here, probably would have been amazing, but we didn't get it. Also, when was Jeremy also stated to be an immortal prior to this episode? I even went back to his major reveal back in episode 12. And yeah, no, we know that he's long lived, but it's also because he's part Bugnarok. And due to Jeremy's hybrid nature, we could always accept that he lived for so long due to his DNA. And also because he napped for decades at a time as well. So... Just randomly throwing in the jewel in his chest is really, really odd. And when you factor in the power shown prior to Jeremy and Himenos, you'd be like, 
all right, so we got elemental powers. But then you got powers to literally rob things of life, but also grant immortality? Listen, that war with the Bugnarog 2,000 years ago sounds less like a war and more like a one-sided slaughterhouse. Seriously, this whole King symbol arc retroactively makes a lot of things that happened earlier in this world history just seem so unnecessary. Raculus tries to surmise that the first king simply let Jeremy's dad go free because of reasons. But I'm like, oh yeah, you didn't really get to meet Raynor like Gira did. Or else you'd assume that Jeremy's dad, if he did have an immortality stone, probably ran away so Raynor couldn't have it. Because Raynor definitely doesn't look like the guy that would give up the power of immortality. Come on now. If you've seen the movie, you know. Ugh, the more I think of how dumb throwing these powers into the mix messes up with the show's own lore, the bigger of a headache I get. This really shouldn't have been a thing. Moving away from that, we got Grody. That, I guess, might be one of Doug Dead's children's. Because now Grody could have been used to symbolize what Gira could have become. Had Cuxus actually followed through with his original goals for Gira. The takeaway here is that Grody is dead and has been for a while. I would argue that he probably was alive during the original Fury of the Gods. But when the previous Sovereign iced him, he did die. But revived the second he was freed. Because remember, back then he commanded legions and dispatched them globally. While after his revival, it was a little bit more centralized. At least the one time that he did it. While here, it appeals to be a global threat again. Which, don't get me wrong, seeing the Fury of the Gods finally come back is great, but this should have happened way earlier. This is just coming so late, and this is the kind of stuff that I wanted back when Grody was first revealed, as there was already some inconsistencies on that front, but I guess the stakes are going to finally be in play, which hopefully start turning the show around for me, because it has felt like nothing but filler after Raculous turned to being a good guy, which, thinking about it, it's funny to think how calculated Raculus was in his original plans to be Doug Dead, but he never factored in once taking the other king's symbols to have all this power to his own? It's like I keep saying, this added powers arc just seemed so unnecessary as everything in the past alluded to it all just being the King Oger. Even Raculus's original plan was to get the King Oger for himself. But then, no, we got these king symbols. Next week does seem to alleviate one of the bigger issues that I've had with the show for the last few episodes, and that is the lack of population. Although 90% of the show is shot in that one green screen set, the outdoor environments being back to back the last few weeks have just been that one Ishibanan area, and it really makes it seem like this show is just strapped for cash. So literally with four episodes left, can the budget just rise a bit? But those are my thoughts, and I know that there will be those that end up disagreeing with them and will say that they're still enjoying the show. And look, that's perfectly fine. I'm just in the boat of this plotline should have been done. And this current arc didn't need to be a thing. And yes, the show did finally get rid of the goofy B-plot for the time being, but to replace it, it just felt like we just replaced it with dead air. So, what did you think about this week's King Oger? Grody being dead all along, Jeremy's chest jewel, and Himeno getting close to the dark side. Really, really wish that was a plot point, but damn, damn. Anyway, that's it for me. Until next time, bye. Hello, Ed Boy. Many dollars, yes? Too much for couch potato, Ed Boy.